Huhu. Show, not tell. Tell, not show. There are three great advices that you find or that you found in every writer's newbie advice. First is don't abuse adjectives. Second is show not tell. And the third was don't repeat yourself. Don't repeat words too much. The third advice lost prominence in the last few years or maybe decades and I believe it's time that show not tell loses prominence as well. Okay, first to the disclaimers. I'm a newbie author and there is the Dunning-Kruger effect. Dunning-Kruger effect is if you are new into um, a topic, then you will gain confidence in your own abilities and judgment very fast. This fast confidence gain is not reflected in your real expertise. If you show this as a graph, there is a spike in confidence. And this spike is called Mount Stupid. Then after a while you realize, oh, this topic might be a bit more uh, complicated than I thought, and I am not that proficient as I thought. And um, then the real growth begins. For example, the most car crashes don't happen when the people got their uh, driver license. They happen half a year after this, three quarters of a year after this, when uh, the teenies think, I've got the driving down, I'm an expert now. Of course they aren't. Yeah? They are on Mount Stupid. I am nearing Mount Stupid. That's the only reason why I am, as a newbie author, have the audacity to say, hey, this rule which serves the uh, author community well and which readers apparently love, maybe we uh, should change it up. <laughs> if you want to uh, watch the videos I make when I'm at the peak at Mount Stupid, please subscribe. So what is show not tell? I show you a bit of a video from a fellow YouTuber. Writing, he was happy, doesn't give your reader a clear idea of what your character is really feeling. You want to show them. Think about his face, his body, and his voice. Using show don't tell, you can help your reader to really imagine the characters in each situation. Like this. Really try to visualize what your character looks and sounds like. His smile broadened from ear to ear. He clapped his hands together and jumped up and down with joy. He giggled and squealed with excitement. Yeah. So, I'm happy. Don't you think it's a bit campy? Another picture from a fellow YouTuber and obviously a vampire with a few more examples. You shouldn't say it's cold. You should describe the snowflakes. I think it's campy. I really think it's campy. I think in a story where uh, it's cold, yeah, then it's cold. If it's not important that it's cold, don't mention it. Do I want to read about snowflakes? No, I don't want to read about snowflakes. Sometimes I watch uh, videos about snowflakes, but that's not the same. And maybe I am a, a snowflake. Reading about snowflakes is overrated. As well as all this fidgeting and blushing and heavens. Not everybody fidgets and not everybody expresses their emotions on their sleeves. This is an important uh, distinction 
between Western culture and, uh, for example, Eastern culture, or maybe even uh, German culture. We Germans and the Asians are not as extroverted as um, Americans or uh, Southern countries. We don't show uh, our emotions on the sleeve, and it rings uh, not true for me when uh, people have exaggerated uh, emotional displays. And, of course, you could describe a measured emotional display. <sighs> Boy, you could leave it. <laughs> and if it's important, just shortly inform them. So I'm deep into the uh, Chinese literature, uh, Chinese web novel lit literature, and they are famed for uh, telling, not showing. And it works well, and this for my opinion as well. And I really think it has something to do with uh, being extroverted or not. Maybe it's totally all right for uh, not extroverted uh, authors and uh, who write about not extroverted MCs that they don't uh, show their emotions and only tell their emotions when it's important. Another thing is the reader level. So um, if you never read a story, you might be thrilled by seeing someone plush. Or you might be thrilled by reading that someone is fidgeting. One of the things you uh, people say about show and not tell is that um, people can better imagine the story, that they get deeper into the story, that's more immersive. And I really believe that's true. But I think it's especially true for new readers and people who don't read that much. And of course, um, people uh, who are not that into imagining things. <laughs> Uh, this, uh, the, I don't want to bash them, and they are just people who uh, don't have such a uh, vivid Im imagination, and um, it's perfectly all right to uh, take a step uh, into their directions and um, help them a bit out with imagining what it's like when it's cold. But there are other readers, like myself, who read uh, th several thousand books, and who are a bit fed up with the standard descriptions. You don't need to describe to me what's like to be cold, what it's like when it's cold out there. I know what it's like when it's cold out there. So um, another aspect is think about fairy tales. So just guess how long is the fairy tale Sleeping uh, Beauty? Please guess how many um, pages. Guess how many pages a Cinderella is long? Both are about five pages in German. That means four or three pages in English. That's all. Fairy tales don't do show and not tell. They are told stories and you get the story told. Fairy tales inspired the imagination of generations and many authors wanted to show you their version of the fairy tales and of course they have to show you their version because um, the told version is already told and written down so they have to um, include interesting snowflakes into their story that they can distinguish their story from other similar stories from the other um, 1111 adaptations of the beauty and the beast but if you have a truly original story there are no truly original stories. <laughs> but a story who have lots of original aspects, you can focus your showing on the original aspects and uh, just tell everything around to give it uh, in an envelope. I don't remember the word for that, you know. To come back uh, to the aspect that was formerly 
really important in uh, writing books that don't repeat yourself. And this don't repeat yourself even included names. And that aspect lost importance very thoroughly. Authors did uh, things in the past, like if they mentioned Tobias too often, they replaced it with the strong man, the red hat. But for a current reader, this reads as cheesy or campy, or um, even hammed up. And uh, for me, all that descriptions read as uh, cheesy or campy. I believe I can take all the cheese and ham and uh, put it on toast and eat it and have a nice ham and cheese sandwich and don't have to bother with uh, descriptions. So I don't say uh, do not describe anything, only tell. No, I believe it's the same like with uh, the word repetitions. It's totally um, okay to repeat uh, some words nowadays and uh, so I believe it's totally okay to tell some things nowadays that your readers don't have to suffer through all this fidgeting and plushing. <laughs> all right, this was my unpopular opinion uh, video of the month. Good that the month is finished now and uh, see you soon. Like, uh, don't like, unlike, follow, subscribe, do the YouTube chess, and I hope to see you soon. Ciao!